Hi, welcome back to Open Hand Farm. As part of my Azure Standard order this month, I bought a 20 pound box of Gala apples. I love to have on my shelf spiced honey apples. I use them to make pies. I use them to put on waffles, to put on oatmeal, to eat by themselves. Um, just so many good uses for them. And I personally do not eat white processed sugar. So I like it when I find a recipe that's made with honey or maple syrup. And this one, you can substitute honey for the sugar. I also like it because it's water bath canned, which means it's just boiling water for like 20 minutes and it's done. The first thing I do before I start this process is make sure I have everything out that I'm going to need. When you start chopping and peeling apples, your hands get sticky and things get messy. So I like to have it all out before I start. So let me show you what I have out ready to go. I have my recipe close at hand, my bowl to put my apple cores and peelings in, my slicer. I bought this from Pampered Chef probably close to 15, 20 years ago, and I have used it like crazy. I have a chopping board so that I can cut the apples to the size we need them after they're peeled. I have all the things set out to make the syrup so when the time comes, I don't have to go looking for them. I have my big pot that I'll put the apples in. I, of course, have the apples that look wonderful. And I always have a bowl or sink of hot soapy water because sticky hands are no fun. I sterilized my jars and I'm keeping them hot in some boiling water in my sink. I have my lids soaking in boiling water. Let's see if I could get one of these. Ooh, that's warm. Um, to soften this red waxy seal so that they will have a better chance of sealing. My rings are handy. I have my water bath canner ready to go. Let's put it all together and see what we get. The way this works is you put the apple on these little prongs and then you turn the crank and it takes the apple up here. It hits this blade, peels the apple, then sends it through here and this blade cuts it into a spiral. You push this release button and that will send this forward and backwards. All right, we want it as far back as it'll go. All right, then you can just take the apple off and let me show you what it looks like. It's just a spiral. Whoops, that one broke off. And I'm just gonna set it on the chopping board and we'll cut them later. I decided I'm going to put the cores in one bowl and the skins in another bowl. I just checked out a book from the library called No Waste Cooking. So I'm curious what it will tell me I can do with these two items. I ended up with a bowl of cores. Now, I know some people are thinking, oh, why don't you just give that to your chickens? Well, number one, these cannot go to the chickens. These have seeds in them, and apple seeds have cyanide in them. And because chickens are so small and there's so many seeds available to them in this bowl, it would not be good for them. So I'm gonna set them aside and see if there's something that the book on no waste cooking says I can use them for. Now these, if I can't find a purpose for them, I will give these to my chickens and they will love them. So I'm just gonna set all these aside and get the things that we need to make our syrup. All right, this recipe calls for 20 pounds of apples. The 20 pound box should make seven quarts of apple. I might end up with a little bit more, or a little bit less, we'll have to see. The first item in the recipe is five cups of room temperature water. Then we're going to add 
one to one and a half cup of honey. We're gonna add apple pie spice. We need one teaspoon, a half a teaspoon of salt, three teaspoons, one, two, and three. And this eight. recipe calls for vanilla bean, but I don't have vanilla bean, so I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla in here. I'm gonna use a whisk and mix this all up. Mostly I just want the honey to kind of mix with the water. All right, I get my apples. I'm gonna pour it in. Just make sure that all of the honey is out of the bottom and mix it up. We're going to cook these over the stove until they get a little soft and then we're going to add them to the jars. When the apples get a little soft, you're able to stir them better. So here's what my pan looks like. Nice and full, but not all the way to the top. I'm gonna to put it on the stove and let it come to a boil and just watch the apples until they slightly start to wilt. You don't want them to wilt a lot or else they'll be too soft after you can them and they'll be too mushy. Brought them to a boil, you can see that they're a little soft and you can see the juices. So I'm going to ladle these in and we want a one half inch headspace. So I have this tool that measures the headspace. I don't know if you can see the measurements on there, but the second little jut out is one half inch. So you would rest it on your jar on the one half inch and see how much space you need to leave. So we're gonna go just below this ring right here. We're also going to use this to get any air bubbles out that might be in and around the apples because if we don't, then there could be some areas that don't get processed well and leave air that can cause contamination. All right, that looks good. So I think I have enough left maybe for a pint. So I'm gonna grab a jar and see what we can do. All right, so we have seven quarts and a pint. Now what we wanna do is take a rag, put it in vinegar, wipe the tops of our jars because that sweet honey will keep our lids from sealing. We need them to be clean and vinegar does a good job of that. And I have this nice little magnetic wand that will help me do that so I don't have to put my hands in boiling water. And then we want to put our rings on. These rings will only be used while we are canning these. After we can them, we're going to take them off so it doesn't matter if they mask. Now we're just kind of finger tightening. We're not like taking our hand and tightening it as hard as we can. Yeah. Alrighty. Now we'll put these into our canner. All right, I'm gonna turn my water back up. It's almost to a boil. And that's where I wanted it before I put my jars in. I'm gonna use my jar lifter. The rack has dividers in it. I told you as I put these in here, the water would end up rising and it definitely is. So I wasn't thinking when I went ahead and did a pint to go along with the seven because this canner only holds seven jars. So I will just hold on. I don't have to cook that jar. I can just put them in the fridge and have them usable for now. Whereas these will be shelf stable and I can put them in my pantry. So I will cook the seven quarts and put the pint in my fridge. So here it is with the seven jars, but I need for the water to come about an inch to two inches above the jars. So I have my faucet water running to the highest temperature I can get it and I will add to this so that it won't take as long to boil. 
I'm going to use the end of my measuring tool and I'm just going to sit it in there on top of a jar lid and I'm about an inch and a half or a little bit over so I'm good with that. I'm going to put the lid on, turn the heat up and wait for it to boil. So I want to let you know that I'm going to wait for this to come to a boil and then I'm going to set a timer for 25 minutes. 20 minutes is if your elevation is below 1,000 feet, but I am slightly above that, so I have to increase my time by five minutes. While I'm waiting, I wanted to show you these two books. This one is called Cooking with Scraps, and it says, turn your peels, cores, rinds, and stems into delicious meals. And this one is The Zero Waste Chef. And it says, plant forward recipes and tips for a sustainable kitchen and planet. I looked in both of these to see what I could do with my apple cores and my apple peels. So the Zero Waste Chef suggests that with my cores, I make apple scrap vinegar. So that would be like an apple cider vinegar. And you just need the cores, a tablespoon of sugar. It can be coconut sugar, which is what I use, so I will do that. And then you put enough water in to cover the scrap, and then you let it sit on your counter. I can do that. So I'm gonna do that this afternoon. I'm gonna get those going. Of course, I have more than what they asked for, about four cups, the peels from eight large apples, and I think I did about 50 apples. So I probably won't use them all, but I will make some. The Cooking with Scraps book suggests using my apple peels to make apple peel chips. So you would take your apple peels and put them in a bowl and coat them with nutmeg, ginger, sea salt, and sugar. Although I will personally use either coconut sugar or honey and then you put it in the oven and cook it for one to two hours at 250 degrees and let them cook until they're kind of dry and brittle. And then they said they would be like a crispy chip, only sweet. So I'm gonna try that too. I won't use all of them. My chickens will benefit a little bit from this project, but I just wanted to share with you I think I'm gonna try those. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up these apple peels while I wait for my apples to finish processing. Now we're going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg and a fourth of a teaspoon of ginger. This is gonna be an interesting taste. I'm gonna put a little bit more nutmeg. All right, then we will add four teaspoons of coconut sugar. You can use whatever sugar you want to use. This is just my sugar of choice. Okay, I've already put paper on my pan. It suggests parchment paper. I just have this brown baking paper, so I'm just going to use it. The book says that you can also do this with like potato peels and put some salt on them, some garlic salt, some herbs, and a little bit of oil to crisp them up. Let's put these in the pan. And half, some of them are definitely longer. I'm gonna kind of break those up. There we go. All right, spread this one out. Now we'll put them in the oven. Okay, the apple peels are in the oven and we still have one minute and 35 seconds before the processing time is done for our jars. But after that, we'll turn the heat off and let it sit in the canner for 10 minutes to make sure the boiling water has stopped so that we don't burn ourselves. So I'm going to start this apple cider vinegar. Okay, I have a gallon jar here. It says to use eight large apples and the peelings about four cups worth. Well, I have extra peelings. So I'm gonna use this four cup measure and just see what we can do. Oh, there's my timer. Let me turn my heat off. And it says we don't need to worry about taking the seeds out of these. So I'm not gonna worry about them. All right, 
So there's four cups. Let me get that in here. And we're gonna do another four cups. Now whatever apple cores are not used, I will just put them in my compost pile. That's not a problem. All right, maybe we'll do one more. I mean, we've got them, why not use them, right? And it says, don't worry about the directions. All you have to do is stuff ingredients into the jar, add the water, and there you go. <laughs> so I'm just stuffing. Now, when I ferment things, I have these little lids that I use that let the air out, but I don't have one that fits this jar. And because everything that you are fermenting has to be under the water. They're suggesting that you just put another jar on top of this to hold it down. So we'll see what we need to do here in just a second. I have another thought that I've seen also. All right, we need to add the water and the sugar. So it's one tablespoon, one heaping tablespoon of sugar. And I have decided to go ahead and use the all natural, raw, organic sugar instead of the coconut sugar because that is what the vinegar is gonna draw its energy from. So I wanted it to have the best energy available to it. This was three, four cup amounts that I put in there. So I put three heaping tablespoons of sugar and now I'm going to add water enough to cover it. So that's probably enough right there. You're supposed to stir this, so let me get a spoon. It's kind of hard to stir because it's packed in there. <laughs> but I'll do my best. I am making it down in there, so that's good. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. Now, if you leave this long enough, it will form a scoby in here, kind of a little blobby looking thing. And that's awesome because that means you have made vinegar with the mother. So it is live and very good for you. See how some of this is still kind of sitting, it likes to rise up above the water. I am going to take a Ziploc bag and insert it in here. And I'm going to fill it with water. And the weight of the water should hold everything down under the water that's in the jar. So I filled the Ziploc bag with water and the pressure of it has forced this water inside the jar to come all the way up to here. So I know that everything is covered in there. Now, sometimes you will get a white film on top and that is called chem yeast and it's not mold. It's just a white layer and you can take your bag out and skim off what you can. It's not gonna hurt this. So I've never done this. I'm anxious to see how it goes. I've been wanting to do it. So I'm glad I had these scraps and the book to tell me how to do it. So I'm gonna set this aside and now it's time to get our cans of apples out of our water bath canner. When you take your jars out, you want to use your jar holder and you do not want to set them down somewhere and then move them later. So I have a towel over here in an area that I know I'm not going to need to use that area tonight. So I'm gonna set them over there because they need to sit anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to cool before you move them. Now I also wanna tell you that there is a little bump on the top of the lids and when I take them out of this water and the cool air hits them, that's going to pop. And that will mean that your jar lid has sealed onto your jar and you want that to happen. So listen for the pop. And also, if there's water on top of your jar, just leave it there, it'll evaporate. Don't tip your jar to try to tip the water off or anything like that. You're just going to safely move your jar to your towel and be done. So here we go. Listen for the pops. I'm going over my sink area because I know that's a long way. Be sure and squeeze that handle tight to hold onto that jar and make sure you're under the lid and the rim so that you get a good tight hold. Now you don't want any fans blowing on these jars because they are so hot that they could crack 
with the cold air blowing on them. And the last one, there we go. Let's see if we can hear them and see if you can tell when that top goes in. Oh, there went one. That's what you wanna hear. Well, I was able to process seven quarts of honey spiced apples and two pints that I will just refrigerate and use. I made the apple peel chips and they are delicious. They're crunchy. They are just so good. <laughs> I will definitely make those again. I have to just figure out why I need to peel apples. Um, then I used some cores and apple peelings to start a homemade apple vinegar. I've never done that before. I'm anxious to see how it turns out, but I think this has been a great day, very productive, and the best part is I did not have to throw away any parts of the apples. I love that part. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you have gotten a feel for what it's like to do no waste food. I will leave the information about the two books that I was showing you today and got these recipes from. So if you wanna check them out from your library, you can decide if it would be something that you would like to have in your home library. I like the fact I did not have to throw away part of the produce that I paid for. Hopefully, this will encourage you to figure out ways to use every bit of food that you have also. Until next time, blessings on you and yours. This is day three and it's starting to foam and be active. So now I can stop stirring it all day and only do it once a day. This is day 12. It's still bubbling. And as you can see, I went ahead and used the jar method because the bag just got so messy to take in and out to stir. But it's still bubbling. You can see it's kind of bubbled over at points, which is why you want to put it on a towel and a tray or something. Everything is still covered well and it's starting to smell like a vinegar but i'm gonna let it keep going until it doesn't bubble anymore i am going to cover the top of this with some cheesecloth because i just noticed a gnat flying around and i don't want that inside i haven't noticed any until right now so we'll get that taken care of